Caddis Maximus here, this time with the Totco chronometric tachometer. And so what that means is it's a mechanical dial tachometer. This happens to be a model 145, which is a more premium 10,000 RPM unit. Two dials, so the big dial goes around once, the little dial will go up to one, that's 1,000 RPM. That means if this only goes up to the one here, that's 100 RPM. And there's actually, if you look, there's 20 divisions. So uh, each major division would be 10 RPM, 5 RPM for a minor division. So surprisingly good resolution. You don't run into these very often, talk, even Taco products. Um, Taco, I believe, is still around. They really cater to the oil and gas industry, making various gauges. And so a long time ago, I don't know when this was made, maybe 50 years ago, they had some other tools. It was, surprisingly enough, made in L.A., Los Angeles. This, I'm surprised, it's, had, it's a whole complete set, except for right here, there was a like a uh, three-inch extension rod, and that's the only thing that this whole setup is missing. Otherwise, we have three different accessories here. This is a surface wheel. This diameter, which is about two inches, is specifically calibrated, so... What you do is you put on the surface wheel, put it on the edge of something, and what it's telling you is the feed a minute is RPM divided by two. So if you put ran this unit, use this surface wheel, it told you a thousand. You would simply divide the thousand by two, and you know that you were it was something was traveling at 500 feet a minute. Which, of course, this being a 10,000 RPM unit can mean it can measure a maximum of 5,000 feet a minute. Which would be something almost 60 miles an hour. I think it's like 57 miles an hour. And then we just have one rubber fitting. These are little machined aluminum uh, bits, so I could certainly have another rod made. And then we have a, uh, a cone rod. for, And so that's what I'm going to use. Well, first I'll show you how it works. Now, you might be wondering, what does it mean, chronometric tachometer? Well, we know a tachometer is. It's something that displays RPM. Chronometric means time. And that's how these work. Is you have this little button here. And how it works is that button, when you press it, starts a, one, it starts a stopwatch, but at the same time engages the spindle. Now, this is a ball-bearing spindle. It runs very smooth. We can see nothing's happening right now when I spin it. But when you press the button, it winds up a six-second chronometer. And so what it's doing is it runs the, it engages the clutch, starts the six-second chronometer. So you want to have this already connected to whatever you're measuring and spinning. And spinning, and you press the button. And it engages the clutch for six seconds. And, and then the needle just starts counting up just like a dial indicator or something or any other kind of just counting needle. But then the clutch disengages. And so whatever you're left with is the RPM. So it's, all it's doing is counting the absolute root number of rotations over a six second time period with the clutch being engaged and disengaged automatically through an internal clock mechanism. This is all, I'm sure it's pretty complicated inside, especially with two dials and the clock and clutch mechanism. Should go without saying that something like this, that is a glass lens, much harder to scratch. And just thought it was a neat old tool. So it zeros every time you press the button so what I'm going to try to do here, and it's a video I'm going to make soon here, which is this old Black & Decker that I paid 5 bucks for. This is a half-inch hole gun, 600 RPM, made in the 90s. This is the last of the professional-grade Black & Black and Decker branded drills before they went with DeWalt. But we'll go ahead and see if, <laughs> if it's off. We don't know if it's the unit or the drill, but what you do is you run the drill...
just like that. You'd want to have whatever you're measuring already up at speed, already have the spindle running and spinning, then you'd press the button. And what we can see here is we got a real exact reading of exactly 620 RPM. Proving that we're in the ballpark first, both for the gauge and for the label advertised RPM of the drill. Now this is broken in. Brushes are running a little bit more smoothly, so it could be that this is running. I am also have it connected to uh, a true like 119, 120 volts. But it, I've tested this a few times and it seems to be pretty well spot on. So anyway, this thought it was a neat little unit. And uh, just a cool, complicated little device. I like on the instructions down here at the bottom, it says, you know, FAPR lubricated ball bearings. For the lubrication is not necessary. Should Repair should only be re made by experienced repair repairmen or sent direct to the factory. They're not just saying no user serviceable parts inside. They're just saying it's complicated. Decided to pop it open. Those screws were pretty tight. Not exactly sure how it works, but we can see that there's just a whole bunch of gears and parts and multiple levels and layers. There's the, it's like a worm drive connecting to this little gear set. We have a larger gear there. We have, you know, various springs. And then when we push this button, it's actually on this upper bar part. So when we activate it. It ticks for its six seconds, and then that part stops, and that's apparently what stops the clutch. So I have no idea exactly how this whole mechanism works, but we can see maybe, you know, it's not a Swiss watch or anything, but it's certainly a pretty complicated little unit. And one other thing I was noticing on this, and I just want to point this out here, is I'm going to run this drill in forward. And obviously it works just fine. Now I'm going to reverse the drill. Well, <laughs> supposed to have it spinning before you hit the button. Now I'm going to reverse the drill. We're going the other way. So somehow in the internal mechanism in this, uh, is able to ensure that the needle moves clockwise regardless of which direction the input is spinning. And I don't know how internally with all those gears it's able to do that. But I actually think mechanically that's pretty amazing for a device like this to be able to measure in a, uh, to measure both forward and reverse. It almost seemed like when... So when the drill's running in reverse, this is spinning this way. When the drill's running forward, this is spinning this way. So it almost seemed like there's a touch of a delay, like some kind of mechanism knows that it's that it uh, is spinning a, a, the non-normal direction. But nonetheless, I thought that was like probably one of the most amazing features of this thing is the fact that it can measure either left or right. And the only thing they really mention in the manual is when you're measuring, you want to hold this still. You don't want to be tilting it or moving it around because of the clock mechanism that's in there. When you're measuring, you just want to have it absolutely uh, steady. So anyway, I just thought that was an amazing little device, a little 10,000 RPM mechanical tachometer, mechanical dial tachometer from Taco, And just wanted to share it with you all. Anyway... Really appreciate everybody who's been supporting the channel. We'll see you next time.